All right, now let's look and see how we can combine resistors together. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at resistors in series and parallel. And what we're going to do is look at techniques for taking a group of resistors and reducing them to, in many cases, a single equivalent resistor. So let's look at first what we have to understand is how do they combine in series and parallel? Well, let's first look at resistors in series. And in this case, let's assume I've got a voltage source connected to three resistors. There's some current I flowing around this single loop. This is R1, R2, and R3. And if I define a single current flowing around that loop, because they're all in series, I'm going to define the voltage drops across those resistors according to the path of sign convention. And now I'm going to write a KVL plus Ohm's law equation. So using the little shortcuts we talked about before. So in this case, going around the loop, V1 is equal to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. So I've just combined everything together into a single equation and not even bothered to write the voltage variables across those resistors. All right, now here's my claim. My claim is this. I can replace those three resistors with a single resistor, a single equivalent resistor, such that the current I1 is the same. Same current in both loops. Well, what is the equation for this circuit? This is just Ohm's law. So in this case, V1 is equal to I times REQ. Now my claim is this equation and that equation are equivalent. In other words, this is equal to I times R1 plus R2 plus R3. If I'm claiming that equation and that equation give me the same V1 and the same I, then clearly REQ must be equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And as we can see, resistors in series simply add together. Now I can do this for any number of resistors. I can have as many as I want. So I can actually take this equation and I can generalize it. And I can say for n resistors in series, I can easily show that REQ must therefore be equal to the sum of I equal 1 to N of R sub I. So that's my general equation. But we're going to add together however many resistors we have and combine them together. So that's pretty easy to prove mathematically. Now let's look at parallel combinations of resistors. So in this case, I've got a single node pair circuit, which we've seen before. All of the elements are connected between these two nodes, top and bottom. And I'm going to claim a transformation exists such that I can combine those three resistors and come up with an equivalent resistor such that the voltage V 
will be the same across the three resistors as it was for the equivalent resistor. So what is the transformation I need for that? Well, in this case, I must have the same voltage V across all of the resistors. So by the passive sign convention, I can define those currents like so. And I can go through and I can write a KCL equation. So if I do KCL plus Ohm's law, I can do it for the top or the bottom node. It's the same answer either way. I1 going in must be equal to V over R1 plus V over R2 plus V over R3. Or grouping these terms together, this is equal to V times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Over here I have a single resistor and once again this is very easy to calculate. Ohm's law. I1 must be equal to, in this case, same current flowing around is equal to V over REQ. And therefore this is equal to V times 1 over REQ. So the only way for these two equations to be equivalent is if 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Or I can write it and say that REQ is equal to the inverse of the sum of the inverses. 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So here's my result. Now you look at this and it looks kind of messy, but really there's something very simple here that doesn't really leap out unless you think about this problem a little bit differently. What is 1 over R? It's a conductance. What I really wrote here was that GEQ is equal to G1 plus G2 plus G3. That's what that equation really says. In other words, conductances in parallel add. So resistances in series add, conductances in parallel add. Now once again, I had three resistors in parallel, so I wrote that equation, but I can always extend this. I can rewrite this. For n resistors in parallel, we can show that REQ will therefore be equal to the sum of I equal 1 to N of 1 over R sub I and then the entire thing raised to the power of negative 1, the inverse taken of it. So this is the generalized equation for any number of resistors in parallel. Now, there's a special case that people use a great deal in circuit analysis that I want to point out. What if n is equal to 2? If n is equal to 2, then REQ is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 for two resistors. Multiply top and bottom by R1 and R2. This gives me R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. In other words, the product divided by the sum of the two resistors. This is a very common equation everybody just memorizes. When two resistors are in parallel, multiply them and then divide by their sum and then that is the parallel resistance. It only works for two resistors, doesn't work for three. So if you try to do R1 times R2 times R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3, totally wrong answer. But it works very nicely for two in parallel. So I point this out just because this case is so common. 
product divided by the sum. You will see this and people use it all the time. All right? So, remember, two resistors in series reduce to a larger resistor. They combine to a larger REQ. Two resistors in parallel, even when combined, will create a smaller REQ. So in this case, REQ is bigger than either resistor in series. In this case, REQ is smaller than either resistor in parallel. I point this out because it's a sanity check. You'll be surprised how, many, how often people will make mistakes and don't do that sanity check. If you do a parallel calculation and wind up with a larger resistor than you started with, or a serious calculation and a smaller one, then clearly you did something wrong. You've got to make sure, check your answer, see what you did. Now, once you understand how series and parallel combine together, now you can do things like this. Let's work an example. Let's take a network of resistors that are both series and parallel, and let's combine them together. Let's find the equivalent resistance for this circuit. So I want to find REQ between these two terminals. And in this case, I have a network of four resistors, four ohms, 18 ohms, three ohms, and six ohms. I want to reduce that to a single resistor. What do I do? Let's do this step by step. Let's start and say, are there any two resistors in that circuit that are either in parallel or series? And if so, let's combine them. Well, are there any in parallel connected between the same two nodes? No. But what about these two resistors? Clearly, those are in series. Let's combine them together. If these are combined, I'm going to have 3 plus 6 is equal to 9 ohms. I'm going to replace these with a single resistor. So let's do that and let's redraw this. So now my network looks like this. 9 ohms, 18 ohms, 4 ohms. Now look at this. Are any of those resistors in parallel or series? Well, obviously, these two are now in parallel. So in this case, I can take these and say, OK, these are in parallel. Product divided by the sum, 18 times 9 divided by 18 plus 9, and that will be equal to 6 ohms. So let's redraw this again. Let's replace these two in parallel with a single resistor. So now I've got 4 ohms and I've got 6 ohms. Now what do I have? 4 plus 6, those are two are clearly in series. I'll combine them together. And what I wind up with then is a single 10 ohm resistor. And that is my equivalent resistance. So anytime you see a network of resistors like this, if you can find some place to start that's either in series or parallel, you can just combine them together and then step by step go through until you come down to a single equivalent resistor. All right? Okay, so we'll finish up this chapter next time by looking very quickly at the concepts of voltage division and current division, which follow as a consequence of this idea of resistors in series and resistors in parallel.